Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all well and thank you for coming over and joining me for another video. So it's been a few weeks since I've actually put out a turn and video. It's been the last couple of weeks of doing resin trials. So I thought it'd be nice actually to do something a bit of turning. Um, due to the, obviously when we do the lives, we try and knock out a project in about an hour and a half. But when I'm doing a video, I can take a bit more time and be a bit more creative and uh, yeah, be a bit more delicate with things. So I was in uh, Devon, Cornwall area last year. Uh, went down and see some friends. Uh, while I was down there, I was lucky enough to go to Michael Howe's uh, place, uh, who absolutely sells an amazing amount of wo uh, wood. Uh, unfortunately, he's not feeling too well at the moment. He's got some heart conditions. So hopefully, Michael, you'll get better soon. Uh, you need to be back out there, mate. And uh, we do miss you in the lives and the chats and everything else. So um, I have a block here that I got from Michael. Um, I thought what I'd do is I'd turn a little vase, vase, whatever you want to call it. So, um, bit of colour, bit of real fanciness, try and make it look petite and nice. Um, so, yeah, I'm not quite 100% sure what I actually want to do, but I'm going to let the, uh, the creative juices flow, as they say, and we'll see what we can come up with. So, um, yeah, let's get this in the lathe. See what we can. I'm going to do it between centers to start with, uh, till we get a round. Then we'll get a, a tendon on the end, get it mounted in the chuck, and then we can get a shape. Um, the shape I really got in my head is like a, a a bowl coming into the bottom where it swoops up into the top. I don't want the neck majorly thin, um, but I'd like to try and get a nice shape that well the shape I've got in my head anyway into it, uh, and then we'll hollow it out and see what happens. I don't do much hollowing, so that'd be nice to do a bit of hollowing as well. So. Let's get this in the lathe. I'll see you guys over at the lathe. So here we are at the lathe. Got our piece. I'll just give you a rough size of what it is before you get excited. It's 200 mil long or eight inches by just under, uh, well, I'll say three and three quarter inches or 95 mil square. Well, it's a hundred there, but um, roughly a hundred by hundred. So what we're going to do first off is we're going to get this marked up to put between our centers I'm using I always use the center finder you can use obviously one of these which does exactly the same job but because this is not square you're not your your marks are not gonna be perfectly in the center but this is a lot easier so it's just stick it on there and mark our place and what I do is I do every single corner because what happens then is because it's not perfectly square as you can see you will get a line either side so what you can do then is just find your centre. So we'll do that on both sides. I'm not 100% sure what this bit of wood is. So um, I can't tell you. Uh, I would imagine it actually looks like a bit of sycamore, but whether it is or not, I'm not 100% sure. So I'm just going to drill in here just for somewhere for our tip of our bit to grab into. So one there. And then one on this side in the middle. Like that. So what we can do now is I'm using the SC2 chuck. There's a nice little chuck. I'm just going to use that to hold it into there. Just to get our live centers in. Like I say, once we've got a round and got a tenon on it, then we will um, we will then put it into our chuck all right so we'll mount this between centers so obviously in our locating hole wind it in nice and tight just so it doesn't slip now we can uh, round this up So always remember safety glasses respirator i'm quite lucky extraction will take a lot of my dust away and dirt but if you haven't got a good extraction system then please make sure you wear a respirator because um that dust ain't going to go away and it'll end up damaging your lungs right so let's get this rounded i'm going to be using uh record power 
rough and gouge for this. Uh, let's get it rounded up and then we can move it into our chuck. some round bit of tear out but you expect a little bit from uh, your rough and gouge so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put a tenon on this end so we can hold it on our chuck because we're using the SC2 chuck the SC chuck is only like a I think it's about a 40 mil chuck so what we need to do is we need to do a tenon we're gonna have to go into our chuck because obviously we don't want a huge tenon it's not gonna fit so we will get the parting tool and we'll take this down so it grabs nicely or ready for our our chuck just chuck our tenon size so that is 47 mil so we're just going to take a bit more for that don't want to be too long because we actually want the chuck jaws to bang against the bottom of our piece and it actually could be a little bit smaller huh? So that should be small enough. So that's dead on 40 mil. So let's take this out of here, mount this in our chuck. Still need our tail support, tail stock support up, but it's uh, I prefer to turn with it in the chuck than what I do um, than what I do between centers. So we're using our tail stock just to hold it together. We don't really need it, but it's just there to keep pushing into our chuck for a little bit more stability till we get our rough shape. Um, so now we've got it round, I could use, I'm going to use the rough and gouge basically to get rid of some of the material till we get our rough shape. As soon as we get our rough shape, then I will go to either the bowl gouge or the spindle gouge to finish it off. So, um, yeah, let's get the shape. Like I said, the shape I want is sort of coming in around the bottom and swooping into the top. Um, I'm not 100% sure what shape I want yet, but that's the sort of shape I'm going to go for. So let's get rid of some of the material with the rough and gouge. And then we will see where we get. Quite a bit of speed on spindle work, so we can get rid of some of this material quite quick. Take this top half out to start with. So I'm just going to change now over to the bowl gouge just to get a final bit of shape on it nice gentle cuts right in the bevel as you can see it's just polishing up that bit of wood
Now a lot of the choices are, do you leave a little foot on it, or do we not have a foot on it? That's the question, isn't it? It's a big dilemma on what a lot of people think. So I don't want nothing too fancy because I don't want the shape taking it away from the colouring. So I think that's about the shape I want. It's just whether I have a foot on it or not, I'm not 100% sure. Let's just sweep this around a little bit more. Actually, I'm going to put a foot on it. I quite like the idea of a nice, delicate little foot on there. So what I'm doing is use a, a small parting tool just to try and bring it in here. And I'm going to finish it just before my chuck. So we're just going to get the spindle gouge and just try and put a little bit more of a bit of a divot in there just to try and make that foot look a little bit delicate so we don't want the foot to be overpowering just enough to just round it off a little bit get rid of that sharp edge So, got my shape I want, happy about it. a little bit of a foot on the bottom. I finished the foot just before we get to the uh, the tail stock. So I've got the shape, so I'm gonna spend a bit of time sanding it up now. I'm gonna sand it up to 400 grit, and then we'll see how it comes out. Um, turns really nice, that bit of wood, with a nice sharp bowl gouge, you get a nice finish on it, a little bit, me, so I'm going to start, such a good finish. I'm going to start sanding that from 240 grit and uh, we'll take it up to 400. So remember when you're sanding, extraction on, so all your dust goes straight down your extraction. Sanded to sit 400 grit. Ready for colouring. But I'm not actually going to colour it until I polish it out first because I don't want to go and spend a bit of time colouring it and then we hollow it and make a mistake and it ruins it anyway. So um, we're going to hollow it out first. Pro tip for you guys watching this video when you create a video and you're doing a process of that video, press record. Um, it helps. 
it actually shows people what you've been doing because I've just spent the last hour hollowing all this out and I've just looked up at the computer and it's not actually recording. So there's a few selective words for that mistake. None of them are broadcastable. So um, yeah, learn from the lesson, move on. So what I will do is I will show you what I have actually done. So I've hollowed this out now. Um, it's hollowed out, not all the way to the bottom. The reason being is I was getting quite a bit of chattering as I was getting down there. Um, so it's, it's hollowed out to around about here. Um, and like I say, I was getting quite a bit of chattering and I was frightened because the wall's not that thick. The wall's only perhaps four mil thick and I didn't want to chatter it and it come through the side. So, um, but I'm going to leave that bit in there. Um, number one, because I don't want to come through the side of the piece. Number two is uh, put a little bit of weight in the base so it's not top heavy because I was obviously quite tall. Um, so, it's Sunday afternoon. Time now is five past five on the 30th of January. Um, I'm going to clear this mess up and I'm going to come back tomorrow and colour this. I'm not quite sure what um, way I want to colour it yet. There's a couple of different ideas I've got in my mind. Um, I'm not 100% sure. So I don't want to do it, make it wrong and then have to do it again. So I'm going to think about it, take the evening to think about it, come back after work tomorrow and uh, we'll colour it from there. So. First things first, I'm going to clear this mess up and I'll see you guys on the flip side. So I thought all day about what colour I'm going to do on this and the best I can come up with or what I think is going to suit this piece is black going into honey. So um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to put a red in the middle, whether I'm just going to fade it black into honey. Um, but what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to spray the whole thing in honey, get a nice, give it several coats so it gives a nice vibrant colour. And then we'll fade in the black and then we can always add a red later on. Inside, I'm actually going to do a ruby red inside. Uh, but we can, the, I'm going to try and get the ring around here, uh, honey, and then the inside ruby red that's my thinking whether that worked that way I'm not sure but that's what I'm going to go for so let's start off by getting some methylated spirits on this and cleaning the grain up and then we can break out the honey and we'll give it a complete coat of honey I'm going to be using an airbrush so we get a nice even coat and with the with the airbrush I can feather in the black a little bit better so we'll clean all the grain out first with some uh, methylated spirits let's lift that hopefully uh, take any dust and dirt what's in the grain still got the airbrush I'm going to give it a nice even coat of honey, starting with this front edge, and then coat the whole thing. I'm going to give it several coats so we get that nice deep yellow. Dry off in between coats. Get two or three coats on it, we should get a nice deep yellow colour.
coats. That's had two coats. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sand that back uh, just with a bit of 400. And uh, that will just take any raised grain out. And then we'll give it another coat and that should keep it all nice and smooth. The grain's slightly raised where obviously the, the stain has gone in and swollen the grain a little bit. So I'm just going to uh, sand that back gently. And then we'll give it another coat of 400, I mean another coat of yellow. So let's pull that back nice and smooth now. So what we're going to do is we're going to put another yellow over that. So that's our yellow. That we're going to do. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some black in the bottom here. Not too far up just in case we want to put um, some red in the middle. I don't know if I will. I quite like the yellow and the black. Um, but we'll get some black. And we'll uh, see what it looks like. So I'm going to start in here. And gradually, and as I come further, I'm going to bring the brush away to give me a more of a dusting in look. So we're getting there first. Looks if it's black. And have a gun. Just bring that set of feathers into. Um, I want this bottom part really black. So as you can see, we're just trying to feather that gray, that black and the yellow in together. And we're just going to give this bottom a couple more coats just so we can get that nice deep dark black. So there we go, black, it's all dry now. Black into yellow. I quite like that actually, so I'm not going to do no more to that. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to sand and seal that. Uh, because I don't want the colours to blend into each other, I'm going to use Cedalose Sand and Sealer Spray. And what that'll do is that'll keep the colours separate. Uh, if I if I sand and seal it by hand, then I'm going to blend the black and the yellow together, which I don't want to do. But before we do that, obviously we need to do the inside, which I nearly forgot. So I'm going to do the inside um, ruby red. So let's change, change the gun. Right, so we're going to do the ruby red on the inside. So I'm going to do inside, and I'm just going to finish it just before I get, because I've taken the yellow over. So uh, that's the plan anyway. So flood it with ruby, and then just gently bring it up. So it finishes just before we get to our edge. And then we could just gently do that so it looked like we're feathering it into the yellow. Yep, I like that. It's just cool it on the edge. So we've not protruded past the edge into there. It's actually nice and ruby on the inside. So that looks quite nice. Just let that dry off and then we'll give it a quick another coat down the bottom just so it's a little bit darker down the bottom. So just a quick dousing in there with a bit more ruby. Just down the bottom. Like that. I'm not going to do no more than that. Just quickly 
draw that. Now we've done the inside, I'm going to give a coat of uh, chestnut products, cellulose, sand and cedar. Like I said, I'm using a spray. The reason being is if I use uh, on a piece of tissue, then I'm going to blend the black and the yellow together, which I don't want to do. I want to try and keep them contrast like it is. So we're going to put a bit on the inside first. So I'm going to build up the coats, perhaps give it three coats, and uh, then we'll be ready to do our next step. I've put around about um, five coats of sand and cedar on this to give it a nice seal. Um, I've lost a little bit of the smoothness now, so I'm just gently going to rub that back a little bit with a piece of uh, 600 grit sandpaper. Uh, the reason being, actually 500, not 600, the reason being is I just want to take back a little bit of that sand and sealer so we've got the smoothest finish we can get ready to do our top coat. So I'm just going to run this slowly, it's not going to be a major rush, just a light run over the top of it. Just like I say to get that smoothness back it is. Just like that. So we'll get a cloth and uh, just wipe that off. So we're just going to take all that dust off of it. So we're going to get a piece of clean oh. So we just gently brought that back now. Now, because that looks a bit plain and boring, I'm going to put some embellishing wax over that to enhance the grain. The grain won't be really, really prominent, but I'm hoping that we can put um, something on the black just to enhance the black a little bit. So I'm using gold embellishing wax, Hampshire Sheen. Hampshire Sheen, gold embellishing wax, embellishing wax, should I say. I'm just going to rub that in. So you won't see it a lot, but I'm just hoping for that little bit of a, a hint of it. We'll cover the whole piece. You might get a little bit of a fleck of it in the in the yellow as the light hits it. So we're just going to buff that up a little bit. Just going to get a piece of safety cloth. I'm just going to gently buff that up. And what that should do, it should just enhance this black bit a little tiny bit. There you go, and as you can see, it's just sort of given it a little bit of bit of depth. Nothing major, just a little bit of depth. Can't really see it on the yellow. So now our finishes. Now we can put wax over that if we go if we want to. I want to go for a high gloss, so I'm going to go for uh, a clear lacquer. This is what I use, Cobra um, high gloss lacquer. Really good lacquer. Get some nice coverages with it. But always remember, it wants to be room temperature and it wants to be well shaken. So 
So this is going to end up having about uh, 10 coats, but we're going to put a few light ones on to start with. This is the third coat. As you can see, we've got a fairly good gloss on it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up so we get that deep shine because I want to polish it so it's like a piece of glass. So what we need to do is obviously fill all those little indentations up of the wood and then we can cut it back to get our glass-like finish. So we're going to let that dry for a little bit um, and then we'll come back and put another six, maybe seven coats over the top of that to give us our deep depth and that'll give us enough lacquer on there then so we can cut it back to uh, get our nice rich shine so uh, we'll leave that going I'll come back give us some more coats and I'll come back when uh, we're putting the last coat on this has now had 14 coats final coat last three coats have been wet coats to bring up that deep shine um, I know we had a shine before but not like this you can now see the depth of the shine getting into there. So what we need to do now is, um, like I say, final coat. We'll then leave it 48 hours to harden off. And then we'll come back and um, final polish it. As you can see, it's got a nice shine to it now. But when the light hits it, you can see it's got a few little ripples in it. Not due to the lack of coats, but due to where the wood, is, the grain has swollen a little bit when we put the first few layers on. So the idea of cutting it back is that we'll get rid of those and we'll get a nice, perfect, smooth, uh, mirror-like finish. So like I say, final coat, uh, final wet coat. Then we're going to leave it rotate. I'm going to uh, gently warm it off with the heat gun once I've put the coat on it, just to try and tack it off a little bit or try and flash it off a little bit quicker. And then we'll leave it rotating for about 40 minutes to let it go touch dry um, so no dust can get on it. And then um, we'll leave it 48 hours to fully harden and then we'll come back and cut it off so final coat 15 coats um it may be seem a bit excessive but as you can see you need the coats to get the uh, the finish on it So I'm just going to flash off a little bit with the hot air gun. Remember, when you're doing a lack of work, don't turn your hot air gun on pointing at your piece just in case there's dust or dirt in it or you've loosened some dirt off of it. And then it'll end up going all over your piece and sticking to your piece. So uh, start your hot air gun off to one side and then bring it over to the piece. Don't get too close because you will blister the lacquer. Remember, we've put many coats on there. So the base coat is not going to be perfectly dry yet. So we don't want to be getting it too hot. We're just trying to put a bit of warm air over it just to take some of the uh, solvents out of it to just dry off a little bit quicker. Just so that we can... Uh, so basically the, the dust don't stick to it. So what we're going to do when we're going to polish this back, we're going to sand it back to 600 grit very finely. And then we're going to get the Yorkshire grit out on it, original and microfine, to bring us up that beautiful shine that we desire. Um, what we need to make sure we do is that we don't overheat the lacquer because if we do, the lacquer will start to lift off of the embellishing wax because obviously it's a wax over, uh, sorry, a wax, a, la a lacquer over a wax. So if we generate too much heat on the lacquer, it will lift up and start to come off our piece, which is what we don't want. So uh, it'll be a nice gentle uh, buff just to uh, 
bring it up so it's got like i say got that mirror finish which is what we're looking for let's put it on the back camera and then uh, you'll be able to see the sort of finish we've got on it hope that'll show a nice as you can see we've got a nice shine on there So hopefully once we get it polished off, it's going to be absolutely mirror finish. All right, that's enough. So I'm going to leave that to go, leave that to dry for a little bit. And then um, I'll come back and uh, stop that. And we we'll just leave it alone for two days. And uh, yeah, polish it off and finish it off. So at the moment, I'm really pleased with that, how that's finished. Really, really pleased. Right, I'll see you guys when it's all dry in two days' time. Four hours later, nice and smooth and shiny. So I'm just going to, I've got a bit of 600 grit Abronet here. I'm just going to gently rub this back a little bit. Not going to do the ends uh, because obviously the sharp corners will take it back too quick so just going to gently rub this over and all this is going to do is just smooth it out a little bit and then we're going to uh, polish it out and we uh, like I said before where the first coats are lack of swell the grain you're going to end up with a few humps and bumps in it so the idea of this is just to smooth it out so we get a nice perfect smooth finish not going to worry about the foot too much it's more of the actual piece i want nice and smooth you don't want to apply pressure what we're going to do now is we're going to stop that we're going to use a piece of tissue paper wet tissue paper and that will expose any low spots that we've got So, that actually looks quite good. Just a light bit. I'll just have to do a little bit more down here. But the actual main thing is good. So, just a little bit more in there. I think that will do. So now what we're going to do is we're going to Yorkshire grit that original. Let's take it up to about a thousand to give us our first stage of the shine. Fold our tissue so we've got some not a nice cushion. Decent amount. So we don't want to be generating any heat. They're going to be doing nice and slow. So exactly the same principle as what we would if we was uh, doing it on a normal piece of wood. Don't need to apply any pressure. That's our Yorkshire grit original. Should have taken it to around about a thousand grit. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go on the microfine and actually get an even deeper, smoother finish. Exactly the same principle with the microfine. Nice cushion, so we're not Pushing too much pressure onto our piece. Just 
too much on there really. Start off slow, work it in, no major pressure. Because, like I said all along, if we get it too hot, the lacquer will come away from the embellish and wax, and then that'll start to fail, which is not what we want after all. Spending all this sort of time on it, we've nearly finished the process now, so uh, let's try and keep it. That's our microphone, and as you can see now, we've got a perfect smooth finish. Nice shine on it, which is a bonus. But I want to take it one step further. I want to get that real deep, rich shine. So I'm going to do one more stage, and then we're going to polish it with a piece of car polish. So I'm going to go over it with some uh, chestnut products burnishing cream this is more like a, a car teacup which is real fine and uh, we'll see how this comes up so I'm gonna put this on with a safety cloth I'm better you get a better finish with a cloth than you do a, a tissue for this stuff same as the grit Quite a nice generous coat on first. And I get a dry cloth. And just gently buff it. Thing about the burnishing cream is you've got any little tiny marks little tiny swirl marks that will just buff it out and give you that gloss like finish look at that absolutely stunning beautiful shine absolutely beautiful shine Let's see if we can bring it a bit closer and have a look I don't know if you can see that, this camera doesn't really do it justice, but that's absolutely stunning shine. That's uh, got all those swirls out of it. Perfectly smooth, smooth to the touch. Can't feel no other ripples in it no more. So what we're gonna do now is just finish it off with a piece of car polish really, just to give it a uh, decent shine. And also, it just stops any uh, dust and grime just sticking to it. So I'm going to be using some auto glim. 
super resin polish. I'm just going to use a microfiber cloth to put a bit of this on. Let's just give it a UV protection. Hold the lacquer. Because obviously we used an automotive lacquer. And also just protect it from it's being touched. Just get another one. Just buff it up. Let that dry a little bit and then just buff it. And I think we're ready to part it off. Buff this off. Look at the shine. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So that's the process finished. Now the problem we've got, we've got to get it parted without dropping it. <laughs> Let's try. Let's see what we can do. So I'm going to be using the uh, Robert Sorby fin part and tool, and uh, I'm going to be putting a slight un undercut on it so that we can uh, so it's only sitting really on the rim. So uh, let's just clean all the overspray and that off of it first. So let's go for it. I think actually I'm going to stop it there. And I'm going to. It's nearly through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to. It's nearly through. I don't want to, I'm frightened that's going to jump out of my hand and catch, because if I do, that's going to ruin the lacquer on it. So, um, um, yeah. managed to keep hold of it so look at that I don't know if you can see a better light on that that's really, really nice so we just clean this bottom up I'll get the orbital sander out clean this up and I'll come back when it's all done there we go all done all highly polished all finished off sanded the bottom to 600 grit bit of sand and sealer on there just to make it uh, watertight so no moisture can get into it I'm going to be honest, I really, really enjoy doing this piece from the shaping to the colouring to the lacquering. I've, I've just been nice to be able to take my time on a piece and get it to the standard I wanted to get it to. Colours with the Hampshire Sheen Intrinsic colours. I do like the Hampshire Sheen Intrinsic colours because nice, rich, deep colours. Uh, they're easy, appliable, and I know exactly what they're going to do. So that's part of the reason why I stick with the Intrinsics. We use black and honey. Ruby red on the inside. Uh, to give the black a little bit more life, we put some black embellish and wax over. I mean, gold embellish and wax over it. Sorry, just see the gold glimmering in there, which has really just brought that black to life. And the lacquer is what's taking the time. Obviously, we've put 15 coats of lacquer uh, over this piece, and I believe I was doing three coats a night. Then leaving it 24 hours to dry. So once the lacquer was on. We had to then cut it back, 
which I did with 600 grit sandpaper or Abernet, sorry, Yorkshire grit original, microfine, and then we go and uh, burnish and cream over the top of that, and then a final coat of car automotive polish to give it the nice sleek, silky finish. And the good thing is with the car polish, it, it doesn't allow fingerprints unless your hands are greasy. You're not going to get fingerprints all over it, so it just gives it that, and it also gives it a UV protection. So hopefully, if it's in the sun, the colours shouldn't fade. So you know, I've really, really enjoyed doing this, and um, it's actually come out how I imagined, which is very impressive. And I've, I've don't think I've ever had a piece do that before. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you've enjoyed. Um, I do apologise if it's been a long process. I'm going to try and get some photographs of this, but because it's so glossy, I've just tried to take a photograph of it. And uh, you can see the reflection of the camera in it. So whether I'm going to be able to get some good photographs or not, I'm not 100% sure. But I'll get something at the end and so you guys can see a better picture of it. Because obviously, as always, these video cameras or webcams never do justice to a piece. So hope you've enjoyed. Thank you very much for coming over and watching another video. Um, if you're new to the channel, hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. And if you have, then please think about subscribing. If you do, smash that bell button and then you'll be notified for our next video or some upcoming lives that we have. We have lives every week. So you'll be notified for those tours. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming and joining me in the workshop. Have a great week. Speak to you soon. Take care and bye for now.